Good evening, Trinity Church. How are we doing tonight? Doing better? Oh, we can do better than that. How are we doing tonight? Yeah, it's raining. And here in Lubbock, as I learned here in West Texas, we love the rain. Pastor Jonathan texted me and wanted me to tell you guys that if I prayed for rain, that would make me a prophet. And I said, absolutely not. I'll be praying for a tornado. I'll still be a prophet. So it's okay. I didn't pray for a tornado. I will just keep it at rain. As for me, I grew up in the good old state of Oklahoma. So I am very familiar with tornado weather. And from everything that I've seen, we're totally fine. It's probably just some Rain. We're gonna, going to continue this series that Pastor Jonathan started last week called Spiritual Formation. Spiritual Formation. As Pastor Jonathan was saying this past week, man, we are all disciples. Whether you want to be or not, you are a disciple. For me, there are many people that I look up to, that I want to be just like that. I want to be a disciple of. And for us, the question is, what will you be discipled of? Because whether you like it or not, you will be formed into someone or by something. We all will be influenced. And today, we have something called post- Modernism, which means everyone must find their own truth. What I believe is true doesn't mean it's true for you. And I hate, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it to the core of my being. Post-modernism, what is true to you doesn't mean it's true to me. And as disciples of Jesus Christ, We find our truth in the identity of Jesus Christ. We shouldn't be looking to what the media says, what our government says. Dare I say, even what our teachers are telling us, what are you looking to in the word of God? Because I can guarantee you, this is the truth. So as you are being discipled, as you are forming yourself, your spiritual formation, what are you allowing to form you and influence you? And as Christians, we should be trying to be formed by the word of God to be more like Jesus Christ. And it's hilarious to me because if you're like me, you've cried out to God several times in your life whether something happened, whether the storms are distracting you from what God is trying to tell you, and we're asking God, transform me. But when the Holy Spirit convicts or tries to lead you, we resist because it becomes uncomfortable. And as human beings, we don't like being uncomfortable. When I go on a trip, I would rather go on an airplane in first class, because as a pretty tall guy, I want my leg space. As humans, we don't want to be uncomfortable in church. Jesus didn't live an uncomfortable life and died an uncomfortable death so you could be uncomfortable in your seats. We can't be comfortable where we are. Jesus died for you so you had a chance. So I had a chance to be reconciled to the Father, which can only happen through spiritual transformation and confessing that Jesus is Savior and Jesus is Lord. He has to be Savior and Lord. And today we have so many people saying, yes, Jesus, come into my life. I want to give my life to you. I surrender my life to you, Jesus, come in to my life. And then Jesus says, okay, stop doing that. What? Stop watching that, stop talking about that, stop doing, you know, that sin you shouldn't be doing. Jesus is savior, but when you make him Lord of your life, you will allow him to transform you to being more like 
Jesus. And even Jesus himself, he had to go through spiritual formation. The son of God, he had to be formed. Luke 2.52, it says, Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favor amongst God and among men. Jesus grew, he had to go through this process. And I believe that one of the core disciplines Jesus mastered in spiritual formation is serving. It's so simple, but yet we complicate it. Serving, the concept of servanthood. I've learned that God isn't in the business of leadership. God is in the process of servanthood. He's not so much about let's make you a leader, he's more about let's make you a servant. In the word of God, we are actually called to be servants, listen to this, more than 1,000 times. And in the same Bible, God calls us to be leaders only 13 times. You can search it yourself. Over 1,000 times the word of God tells us serve. And only 13, it says, lead. As Jesus said, man, he didn't come to be served. He came to serve. As you are forming your walk with Jesus, how are you serving? Today, I wanna look at the passage in John chapter 13. And we're gonna look of when Jesus, at this time, actually washed the disciples' Feet. Now, if you know the timeline, the story of Jesus, this is before the Passover, before they break the bed, the bread and drink the wine. This is after every one of his miracles. This is before Judas betrayed him, before Peter denied him, and then of course, before Jesus was crucified by everyone in Jerusalem. And during this time, the Romans believed that foot washing had to be an essential part of your daily activities. For example, today, would most of us agree if you don't take a shower every day, you are weird? Yes, just back then, they are doing the same thing. If you don't wash your feet every day, you need help. That's what it was back in the day. And it was actually considered uncivilized, you would be, Criticized, and if you know, back in the day, there was no Air Force Ones. They weren't caring about the creases, the Converse, the New Balance. There was nothing about these shoes. They were just sandals, open-toed sandals. And at dusk, when the sun starts setting, everyone would typically wash their feet. And after they washed their feet, they would splash that dirty, grimy, disgusting water back onto the street. In the juveniles in book three, it talks about how anyone unfortunate enough to be walking along the Roman street at night would often be drenched by this dirty water. So if you were living in this society, you had to make sure don't walk on the roads during dusk. If you do, you're gonna get some feet juice all over you. No one wants feet juice all over you. So be careful when you're walking out during the dusk. And then foot washing was often the chore of female slaves. So this was considered the lowest of lowest work that you could do. But however, if a free person, a citizen, of a person who was of integrity, if they washed the feet of others willingly, it was a great expression of friendship, of love, of acceptance. Not because they had to, but because they wanted to show the people that they cared. In that home, you had to wash the feet of all the elders. And now if we've got any students, college students, high schools, imagine washing the feet of your parents and grandparents every day. That would not be fun. I've seen my dad's feet. Mm -mm, I'm not washing or touching that. But this was the time that they lived in. Aristophanes, he actually mentioned in his book that since ancient times, the role of foot washing and anointment was considered a woman's task. 
but it was held as a precious virtue. And one of Jesus's last acts before he was crucified was washing his disciples' feet. The Son of God, who is held in such high regard, performed the lowest task of washing the feet of his disciples. And I learned that a disciple of Christ allows Jesus to lead their spiritual formation through acts of service. If you want to be a disciple, if you want to be a follower, how are you serving? John chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. As I read this and I was reflecting, if I knew that I was going to die in less than 24 hours, would I still serve those around me? This was Jesus. If you knew, put yourself in his shoes. If you knew you were about to die, would you serve, not just serve, but do the lowliest task that society deemed it to be. And on top of that, he washed the man who was gonna betray him. Would you even wash your enemy's feet? And Jesus knew he was going to die and yet he did something that only slaves and women and those whose low social status do. And then the craziest thing Jesus does is he takes off his robe Then he bends down to wash his disciples' feet. And if you know, during this time, the robe is what identified you as a person of status. What you wear determined who you were. So Jesus took off his authority. He took off his name. He took off the title of son of God. We just read it. He knew he had authority, but yet he took off his robe, tied a towel, and started to wash his disciples' feet. Jesus was willing to release his rights as the son of God and walk in humility. That blows my mind all the power in the world, and yet he chose to serve. And Jesus expressed how much he loved his disciples. Yes, even the one that betrayed him. And the word that John used here in the gospel is he took off to Temai. So Jesus laid down his life. Without his outer garment, Jesus was left with a tunic, basically a shorter garment like a long undershirt that Gentile slaves would wear to serve the house. Jesus went from son of God to slave of man. He took off his title. I learned servanthood requires you to give up your outer garment. Do you want to be a servant? Give up your outer garment. And some of you are not even willing to lay down your robe, your rights, your demands, something that you think I deserve, this mentality. But Jesus right here is saying, take off your garment and serve. Take it off. You have no right, you have no authority, only Jesus does. So what makes you think you're any better than the Son of God 
who washed his disciples' feet. If you truly want to follow Jesus, you got to give up your pride, your rights, your demands, your truth. Give it to the Son of God and pick up his garment. We are so comfortable with this outer garment that protects you from everything that makes you uncomfortable. But yet Jesus can't enter into your life because you have closed your outer garment. God is calling some of you. It's time to open your garment. It's time to show Jesus who you really are and to trust him with everything that you are so you can be spiritually transformed to be more like Jesus. I came across one of my favorite theologians, Henry Blackaby. If you have to love to read, if you have a library, there is a great book called Spiritual Leadership. And he wrote this book, phenomenal book. And there's a quote where he says, some would define a servant like this. A servant is one who finds out what his master wants him to do. So then he does it. But the human concept of a servant is that a servant goes to the master and says, master, what do you want me to do? The master tells him the servant goes off by himself and does it. That is not the biblical concept of a servant of God. Being a servant of God is different from being a servant of a human master. A servant of a human master works for his master. God, however, works through his servants. God wants to work through his servants. He wants to work through you. Give up your outer garment. John chapter 13, verses 6 through 11. So Jesus came to Simon Peter. Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus was replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never, ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter explained, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. Then Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you, for Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. I loved how Peter asked this rhetorical question and then he says, Jesus, don't you dare touch my feet. And then Jesus responds and Peter says, okay, then wash all of me. And Jesus says something key in this passage. If Peter doesn't allow Jesus to wash his feet, Peter will never belong to Jesus. If you can't learn to master the spiritual discipline of service, then you will never belong to Jesus. The very fact that Jesus washed feet shows that we must be willing to do the same. There is a reason that Peter said, no, Lord, do not wash my feet. If you recall, Jesus, that Peter was the first disciple who recognized that Jesus was the son and is the son of God. Peter knew. He was the first one to declare, yes, you are the Messiah, you are the Lord. And Peter freaked out because Jesus should have no business washing a human man's feet. And when you consider how dirty washing feet was, you would probably understand why Peter said, there ain't no way. Listen, there was no modern plumbing. There was no modern sewage system. There was no modern roads. So when you walked through civilization, your feet would be caked with mud, bacteria, and feces from animals and human beings. This task of feet washing isn't for 
the high, it's for the low, right? But Jesus chose to wash their feet and wash their feet clean because servanthood requires you to give in and get dirty. You gotta give in and get dirty. When you give your life to Christ, we are washed. We are washed clean of all of our sins. And for us to be a disciple, if you truly want to be a disciple, you have to know the cost of washing feet. And Jesus knew the cost of washing feet, but he also knew the cost of washing away our sin. A servant, the son of God. As a disciple, how important is it that we learn to serve in our spiritual formation? Let's wrap up the story. John chapter 13, verses 12 through 17. After washing their feet, Jesus put on his robe again, sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth, slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. It's not an accident that one of Jesus' last commands was to wash each other's feet. Before he was put to death, before he was crucified, before he was tortured, he said, wash each other's feet. And it's ironic because Jesus was alive during a time where true honor was taking what belongs to you, to bring Pax Romana or this Roman peace to the whole world. Yet Jesus teaches, no, true honor is to give away your rights. Wash each other's feet and bring the good news to the world. The Son of God. Servanthood, it requires you to give away your social status, your, your wealth, your position, your title, who you think you are, what you think you deserve. It requires you to get down and wash others' feet. Servanthood requires you to give away yourself in service to others. We will never be a disciple if we don't serve those around us. As I was preparing this message of serving, in our office we have a water system where you, know, you put your water, it has the, the water, cold, hot, it's amazing. But it requires you to carry those giant 20 gallon buckets. So when it's empty, it blinks red. Now, I'm not gonna say which staff members ignore that red light, because some of them are here, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> but I was convicted, because I'm here writing about servanthood and service. And then one of our ladies in the office says, hey, can one of you, can you guys help us? And at first I didn't hear her, and then she repeated herself. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll help you. And so then I get up in the middle of writing this, I go grab it in the closet, I take it back, and I was literally just gonna leave the empty one and you know, let her put it up, but I was like, what a servant. Would a servant do that? What would Jesus do? Man, what would Josh do? So I grabbed the empty one and walked all the way back. The Holy Spirit convicted me. You're talking about servanthood and service and you can't even pick up an empty bottle. Jesus giving his life for us that we don't even deserve it. 
And when Jesus faced death, he still served. And I'm facing an empty bottle and I don't wanna serve. He still served. And servanthood isn't about how brave or how courageous or how wise or do you have the best strategy. It's all about sacrifice. Jesus was so much more than a servant leader. He was the suffering servant, the Messiah. Servant leaders, they give away. You give away your rights, your presuppositions, and you put on Christ's love and his recognition. You have to put Christ at the center. And as you learn the discipline of service, Are you truly allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you and form you to love like Jesus loved, to serve like Jesus served? And are you following Jesus? Servanthood is about giving up your outer garment, giving in, getting dirty, and giving away yourself to serve others. This series, I'm, I'm excited, especially for Pastor Jonathan as he continues. What does it mean to be spiritually formed? And I pray tonight that you take this simple spiritual formation of service. It's so important. One of the very last things that Jesus did, how are you serving? And I'm not asking you to go to guest connections and sign up and become a dream team member. No. Start with your neighbor. I'll make it even harder. Start with the person that cuts you off on the loop. How will you serve the person next to you? Because if you can't serve the person next to you, what makes you think you can serve God? Because God is about serving others. You can't neglect others to serve God. You have to serve others to serve God. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. I wanna talk to the person right now who they know they need to give up their outer garment. Right now, you're here, you know that you believe that you are so high up that you have these rights, but God is telling you right now, it's time for you to give up your rights. If that's you, raise your hand. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Now I wanna talk to the person who needs prayer because they know they need to give in and get dirty. They know, man, you've been washed clean of your sins, but you need to start being that disciple and start washing others' feet. Man, if that's you, raise your hand. Amen. Wow. Praise God. And lastly, I want to talk to the person who, knew, who knows they need to give themselves away. It's time for you to give away what you think's important, what you think matters, and you need to start looking at what God says is important, what God says matters. If that's you, raise your hand. Wow. I'm gonna ask you all to stand with me. Virtually everyone here has raised their hand. So if you know the person beside you, lay a hand, find someone, pray for them as I pray. Father God, I just thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you modeled what a servant looks like. Lord, as we are being spiritually transformed into who you are, let it start with serving. I pray, Father, that we learn to give ourselves up to you, to take off this outer garment and to allow you into our lives. 
And Lord, for the ones who knew they need to give in and get dirty, Lord, there is a specific person, there is a sp specific act that they know they were supposed to do, but they've put in it off. Lord, keep reminding them, keep convicting them, tell them, get dirty. The people need to see Jesus. And Father, for the ones that need to give themselves away, the ones who knew what God is calling them to do, they wanna be just like Jesus, where even if he faced death, when we face death, we still follow you and we still serve till the end of when our life is called home. Father, help us to be a servant, to serve those around us, our family, our children, our spouses, our neighbors, our church family. God, help us learn to serve. Open up our eyes, Lord, to those who have a need so we can step in and be the church and serve. It's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen, amen. Well, thank you all for coming. Yeah, give it up. Thank you for joining us in this series for spiritual formations. Of course, please come next midweek, next Wednesday as we continue the series. At this time, the prayer team will be coming up to the front. So if you need prayer, please take the opportunity. Come up so we can pray for you. And as a reminder, make sure you vote this Saturday. We still have signs out in the lobby, tell your neighbors, tell your friends, your family, tell others to go vote, and we will see you this weekend. God bless.